Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Erin and today we are going to be talking about my June TBR which if you guys don't already know I will say this in every TBR video my TBRs are very loose okay I do not follow a structured TBR I am a mood reader and I can make all the plans in the world for a month of reading and line up my whole month as much as I want and that doesn't mean it'll actually get done because that's just who I am. Um, I can't stick to a reading plan. I just can't. I usually get very bored and I end up picking a book completely off something else because it just sounds better to me at that time. So <laughs> this is a very loose, loose TBR. This is just which books I think sound really good currently to me and ones that I really want to read this month and that excite me this month and I've been planning to read this month but as you know that doesn't mean that they will get read. <laughs> Just want to give that disclaimer because I feel like people expect so much from TBR videos and yeah, I this is, this is a very ambitious TBR for me. I have a lot of books that sound good, um, so <laughs> I know they won't all get read. I absolutely 100% know that. Um, I'm setting myself up for failure, but uh, you know, why not, you know? Why not? So the first book on my TBR is one that I am so frick frackin' excited about. I've seen everyone reading it on Bookstagram and it's gotten so many rave reviews that I just knew I had to get it. I don't currently have it in my possession right now. It is on the way to me and it should be here this week. So I will have it in my possession soon, but it's just not currently in my possession. This is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric La Roca. This cover is so beautiful. Oh my god. Mwah, 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 mwah. Delicious. Beautiful. I love it so much, okay? I absolutely freaking love this cover. It is so captivating. This is what I look for in book covers. I need it to grab me from the moment my eyes lay on the cover, okay? I just need it to swoop me up, okay? And that that this one did that okay it did that i will read you the description it's very brief so it says sadomasochism obsession death a whirlpool of darkness churns at the heart of a macabre ballet between two lonely young women in an internet chat room in the early 2000s a darkness that threatens to forever transform them once they finally succumb to their most horrific desires what have you done today to deserve your eyes Oh, I love plots like that. I love where I don't know anything, okay? If you're gonna give me a synopsis, I want it to be mysterious, captivating, vague. I want to be lured, okay? And that's, that's what this does. Okay, this is gonna lure me and, um, I have high expectations. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm nervous because a lot of people a lot of people have given it five stars and I am so excited. It's a novella. I'm pretty sure it's like, how long is it? Um, 102 pages. It's very short. So I, I just think it's going to be perfect for this month. I am so excited. Mwah, so excited. Okay, the next book on my TBR is a last minute edition. I actually added this to my TBR last night. Um, it is Let the Right One In. I am not even going to attempt to pronounce the author's name because I know it's Swedish and um, I'm not good at pronouncing names. So I am so sorry, but it is here. You, you can see it, so uh, yes. But I actually added this to my TBR because me and my partner watched Let the Right One In last night I had never seen the original Swedish version, the one with, you know, subtitles. I had only seen the um, American version, Let, Let Me In, I think it's what it's called. And so we watched it and, oh my god, it's so good. Okay, this is coming from someone who doesn't like vampire stories. I 
love this movie so much, okay? And um, I decided immediately that I was going to read the book because I needed to know everything about it, okay? I just needed to know. So I'm going to read it because I'm obsessed. And let me give you a description in case you don't know what it's about. It is autumn 1981 when the inconceivable comes to Blackburg, a suburb in Sweden. The body of a teenage boy is found emptied of blood, the murder rumored to be part of a ritual killing. 12-year-old Oscar is personally hoping that revenge has come at long last, revenge for the bullying he endures at school day after day. But the murder is not the most important thing on his mind. A new girl has moved in next door, a girl who has never seen a Rubik's Cube before, but who can solve it at once. There's something wrong with her, though, something odd, and she only comes out at night. Ugh. I really like that movie. That's really good. I, I remember liking the American version, Let Me In. I liked it. I thought it was good. I did enjoy it, but I wasn't, like, in love with it. I just thought it was, like, it was good. I was like, oh, yeah, I like it. And then I watched Let the Right One In last night, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it, you know? And now I have to read the book. So uh, I bought it last night. <laughs> it is on its way to me, but I do not have it. So, yes. Next up, we have House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This was a cover buy for me. I bought it primarily because I thought the cover was absolutely beautiful, but I've also seen a lot of people giving it really good reviews on Bookstagram. I haven't heard much about it. I actually don't even know if I know what this book is about. I don't think I do. I think I just bought it because I like the cover, which typical, but I've seen a lot of people talking about how good this is, so I'm very excited. Um, I'll read you the back. Dark, dangerous things happen around the Hollow Sisters. Ever since they disappeared as children, only to reappear a month later with no memory of what had happened to them, odd, eerie occurrences follow in their wake. When Gray, the eldest, goes missing again, Iris and Vivi are left to figure out the mystery, but they aren't the only ones looking for her. As they brush against the supernatural, Iris realizes that the world that returned them 10 years ago might be calling them back but just how much horror lies beneath the surface. I don't know, it sounds interesting, it sounds good. I'm excited, it sounds a little bit different. It doesn't sound like something I would typically gravitate towards. I definitely bought it because of the cover, which, you know, whatever, I don't mind. I like, I like buying off of covers, it's fine. It doesn't bother me, but I'm excited to get to this one. It sounds good. Next up, we have a book that was sent to me by the author. This is Mina and the Undead by Amy McCaw. I am interested in this. I think it looks so much fun. It just seems like a book that's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be one of those just absolutely fun and entertaining books. I, from what I can gather. But from what I've read about it and the description, I really think it's going to be something just fun and lighthearted and just easy, I think, which is always good for me. But I'll read you the back. Mina arrives in New Orleans to visit her estranged sister, Libby. She loves nothing more than a creepy horror movie and can't wait to explore the city's darkest secrets. Vampire tours, seedy bars, spooky cemeteries, disturbing local myths. Mina lands a part-time job at a horror movie mansion and meets Jared, Libby's gorgeous housemate and fellow horror enthusiast. But the perfect summer bliss is broken when she stumbles upon the body of a girl with puncture marks on her neck, clutching a lock of hair that suspiciously resembles Libby's. Someone is replicating New Orleans' most brutal supernatural killings. Mina must discover the truth and prove her sister's innocence before she becomes the victim of another myth. It just sounds easy and fun and something that's just gonna be easy. I know that sounds weird, but it just sounds like it's gonna be an easy book to get swallowed up into and consume me, and it's gonna be a breeze to go through, and it's just gonna be a fun, fun read, and that's what I need after last month's horrible, horrible reading. I just need something fun, easy, just good, you know? I just need something good, and I think this... I think this is going to be fun. Next up, we have Confessions by Kane Minato. That could be wrong. I, I hope it's not. I heard about this book from Jordaline, I believe. I believe she's the one that I heard 
raving about it. She said it was really, really good. And when I read the plot, I was like, yeah, you're gonna need to buy this now. You're gonna need to buy this right this second. It says, after calling off her engagement in the wake of a tragic revelation, Yuko Moriguchi had nothing to live for except her only child, four-year-old Manami. Now following an accident on the grounds of the middle school where she teaches, Yuko has given up and tendered her resignation. But first, she has one last lecture to deliver. She tells a story that upends everything her students ever thought they knew about two of their peers and sets in motion a manacle plot for revenge. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? This sounds thrilling, okay? This sounds exciting. This sounds like it's gonna be a page turner. Oh my freaking goodness. I am so excited. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so excited. This sounds so good. I think if if this is Jordaline who recommended this, Jordaline, this sounds good, okay? Sounds good. I am so excited. I can't even, oh, oh my god, I'm excited. Next up, we have Sheets by Brenna Thumbler, I think. This is a graphic novel about I, a ghost. I'm not actually really sure what this is about. I haven't heard much about it. I just know people said it was really cute, and it looks just really fun, and I, I don't know. I really like, I really just like the pictures. It looks really fun, and just cute and that's what I'm hoping for. I just want something really cute and fun and lighthearted and that seems to be what this is. So I'm very, very excited for this one. Next up we have Wilder Girls by Rory Power. Um, look at this cover. It is absolutely beautiful. Excuse me. This is stunning. This is a stunning cover. Beautiful absolutely beautiful. I'm obsessed. I love this sage green. Mwah. Ah, it's beautiful. Anyways, I may have bought this because of the cover. I may have. I may have. You can't prove it, but you can't prove it. You can't prove it. I said may, but you can't prove it. You can't prove it. It's been 18 months since the Raxter School for Girls was put under quarantine, since the talks hit and pulled Hetty's life out from under her. It started slow. First, the teachers died one by one. Then it began to infect the students, turning their bodies strange and foreign. Now cut off from the rest of the world and left to fend for themselves on their island home, the girls don't dare wander outside the school's fence, where the tox has made the woods wild and dangerous. They wait for the cure they were promised as the tox seeps into everything. But when by it goes missing, Hetty will do anything to find her, even if it means breaking quarantine and braving the horrors that lie beyond the fence. And when she does, Hetty learns that there's more to their story, to their life at Raxter, than she could have ever thought true. I wasn't going to get this book at first because it kind of gives me 2020 vibes. <laughs> It kind of gives me our current living predicament, um, which terrifies me because, uh, I don't know about you guys, but 2020 was traumatizing for me, <laughs> literally. So, things that remind me of the panini we are in, you know, I just, I wasn't into it, but I really like the sound of it. And I really like the cover, so I decided to do it, even though I might regret it. <laughs> What's new? I feel like I at least regret one book purchase a month, so this might be it. Or it could surprise me and be a knockout. Who knows? Time will tell. Next up, we have The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. I don't know how to feel about this book. I have heard a lot of people hate it. And then I've heard a lot of people love it. And that is interesting to me. And I don't know which realm I'm going to fall into. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, okay? <laughs> but it sounds intriguing. It doesn't sound like something I would pick up typically. Like, on my own, I don't think I would have just been like, yeah, that sounds like it's up my alley. This was kind of more, I was researching books 
and this fit the theme that I was researching, so that's why I went with it. It says, when Geyer Price lied her way into this expedition, she thought she'd be mapping mineral deposits and the greatest dangers might be cave collapses and gear malfunctions. She also thought the fat paycheck meant she'd get a skilled surface team monitoring her suit and environment, keeping her safe, keeping her sane. Instead, she got M. M sees nothing wrong with controlling Geyer's body with drugs or withholding critical information to ensure the smooth operation of her expedition. M knows all about Geyer's falsified credentials and has no qualms using them as a leash and a lash. And M has secrets too. As Geyer descends, mounting inconsistencies, missing supplies, unexpected changes in the route, and worst of all, shifts in M's motivations weigh on her more than the rocks overhead. Lost and disoriented, Geyer finds her sense of control giving way to paranoia and anger. On her own in this mysterious, deadly place, surrounded by darkness and the unknown, Geyer must overcome more than just the dangerous terrain and the tunneler that calls the underground its home if she wants to make it out alive. She must confront the ghosts in her own head. But why can't she shake the feeling she's being followed? There's so much to unpack in this story, okay? Like, so much. And I don't know how to feel, but I'm intrigued, and that's why I want to read it. So hopefully, it's good. I don't know. Next up is actually... <laughs> A romance. Um, this was one of my book of the month picks last month and I didn't get around to it, but I really want to read it this month. I feel like I tried to pick some of these books in honor of Pride Month. Um, some of these have LGBTQ plus themes in them, so I was trying to kind of get that in there as well. And this one kind of just fit as well and it's a romance and I kind of wanted to read something cutesy and fun this month as well and that is red white and royal blue I have heard so many people talk about this book and it sounds so cute I'm sorry it sounds so cute if you're not into romance I get it I'm sorry but like I'm a romantic at heart okay like I just love me a good romance and you know I can't help it but I'll read you the plot in case you haven't heard of this book. When his mother became president of the United States, Alex Claremont Diaz was promptly cast as the American equivalent of a young royal. Handsome, charismatic, genius, his image is pure millennial marketing gold for the White House. There's only one problem. Alex has a beef with an actual prince, Henry, across the pond. And when the tabloids get a hold of a photo involving an Alex-Henry altercation, U.S.-British relations take a turn for the worse. Heads of family and state and other handlers devise a plan for damage control, stage a truce between the two rivals. What at first begins as a fake Instagrammable friendship grows deeper and more dangerous than either Alex or Henry could have imagined. Soon Alex finds himself hurtling into a secret romance with a surprisingly unstuffy Henry that could derail the presidential campaign and upend two nations. It raises the question, can love save the world after all? Where do we find the courage and the power to be the people we are meant to be, and how can we learn to let our true colors shine through? Why do I feel like this is gonna make me cry? <laughs> Why do I feel like it's gonna make me cry? Why do I feel like it's gonna make me cry? <laughs> is it gonna make me cry? If you've read this, is it gonna make me cry? That's not a deal breaker. In fact, it's actually a plus. I like romance books that make me cry, but I feel it in the back of my throat when I read the plot. You know? If you know what I'm saying, you know. But this sounds just... It sounds so good. Next up, we have another romance. I know, I'm sorry if you hate romance. Um, there's not too many in this. It's just these two, I believe. So, uh, don't worry. It'll be over soon. But this one was also from my Book of the Month box last month and this is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I almost forgot who wrote this but I really like the cover and this feels like a perfect summer read. Look at that. The tropicalness, the colors, the vibrancy. Feels like summer, you know? But this one, <laughs> this one says 
Poppy and Alex, Alex and Poppy. They have nothing in common. She's a wild child. He wears khakis. She has insatiable wanderlust. He prefers to stay home with a book. And somehow, ever since a fateful car share home from college many years ago, they are the very best of friends. For most of the year, they live far apart. She's in New York City and he's in their small hometown. But every summer for a decade, they have taken one glorious week of vacation together. Until two years ago, when they ruined everything, they haven't spoken since. Poppy has everything she should want, but she's stuck in a rut. When someone asks when she was last truly happy, she knows without a doubt that it was on that ill-fated final trip with Alex, and so she decides to convince her best friend to take one more vacation together, lay everything on the table, make it all right. Miraculously, he agrees. Now she has a week to fix everything. If only she can get around the one big truth that has always stood quietly in the middle of their seemingly perfect relationship. What could possibly go wrong? So it sounds very typical to me. It sounds like the last trip they probably like hooked up or um, one of them confessed to the other that they liked each other. Something like that, you know. You know, the typical things. And it ruined their friendship, yada, 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 yada. And now they're gonna get back together and realize they're like in love or something. So I think that's what it is. I mean, I could be completely wrong, but that's like the vibe I'm getting and it sounds perfect. It sounds perfect. I'm excited, I'm ready, and I'm I'm just happy. I, I, I want the I want the romance cheese, okay? I want it. I want it all. Next up is a book that I have been dying to get my hands on for so long and Oh, I'm so glad I finally bought it, but it is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. Is that right? Yes, Aiden Thomas. God, I'm sorry. Yes, I am so excited. This cover is absolutely stunning. I am in love. It's beautiful, and this plot sounds so good. I'm so excited for it. Let me read you it. When his traditional Latinx family has problems accepting his gender, Yadriel becomes determined to prove himself a real brujo. With the help of his cousin and best friend Maritza, he performs the quince's ritual himself and then sets out to find the ghost of his murdered cousin Miguel and set it free. However, the ghost he summons is actually Julian Diaz, the school's resident bad boy, and Julian is not about to go quietly into death. He's determined to find out what happened and tie up some loose ends before he leaves. Left with no choice, Yadriel agrees to help Julian so that they can both get what they want. But the longer Yadriel spends with Julian, the less he wants him to leave. Ghosts and romance? Ghosts and romance? I mean, I'm sorry, but doesn't that sound good? Sounds good to me. I'm excited. This sounds amazing. I cannot wait. I am so excited to read this one. Also the cover. I already said that, but look at how beautiful. Beautiful. Oh my god. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. So the last book on my list and I think my newest newest book I think this just recently released is Ace of Spades by Faride Abike Imede. I looked up a pronunciation and I think that is correct but I could be wrong. I listened to it five times but I could be wrong. I hope I'm not though. I really think I got close. Um, I think that's right though. I did look up pronunciations. I hope that's correct. But this cover is absolutely stunning. Oh my god, it is beautiful. Look at the back. Ugh. Ugh. Oh my god, it's stunning. It's stunning. You can't tell me this isn't beautiful. Look at it. Oh my god. It's so beautiful. Anyways, it sounds amazing. When two Nivius Private Academy students, Devon Richards and Chiamaka Adebayo, are selected to be part of the elite school's senior prefects, it looks like their year is off to an amazing start. After all, not only does it look great on college applications, but it officially puts them in the running for valedictorian, too. Shortly after the announcement is made, though, someone who goes by ACES begins sending anonymous text messages to reveal secrets about the two of them that turn their lives upside down and threaten every aspect of their carefully planned futures. 
As Aces shows no sign of stopping, what seemed like a sick prank quickly turns into a dangerous game, with all the cards stacked against them. Can Devon and Chiamaka stop Aces before things become incredibly deadly? This sounds so good. It kind of gives me Gossip Girl vibes, which I love Gossip Girl. Uh, so it gives me, it gives me that kind of vibe. I'm excited and intrigued. I want to know what the secrets are. What are the secrets? What are, what is this person holding over their heads? I want to know. And the cover is absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. It just sounds so, so, so good. Okay, my friends, that is my June TBR. It's a lot. It's unrealistic. I already know this. I already know I'm not going to get all the books read. However, I wanted to give it a go. I wanted to put all of the books that I'm really excited for in this video. I hope I get to the majority of them. Fingers crossed. That would be amazing because they all sound so good and I'm excited for all of them. So I'm hoping that I can get to all of them. That's, I mean, that's a big task for me, but I'm, I'm hope, I'm hoping. We'll see. If any of these sound super, super good to you guys and you would like me to do a book review Friday on any of them, please let me know in the comments down below. That way I can plan that ahead of time so I know what you guys want to see and, you know, if you guys don't really care, I will probably just pick whatever I'm feeling that week to put as my book review Friday. So it doesn't really matter either way, but I would like your input in case you guys have one book that is a standout that you would love me to do a full video on. And yeah, that's gonna do it. I'm gonna stop rambling. This was a long, long TBR. And um, yeah, I hope you guys are having a good Monday. I hope you guys are having a good month so far. Let me know in the comments down below what you are looking forward to reading in June. I want to know what's on your TBR as well. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It lets me know what kind of content you enjoy from me. That way I can keep providing you with that kind of content. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We can become friends. I almost messed up my own outro. Talk about books, movies, makeup, horror, all kinds of things. I do a lot on this channel, so hopefully there's something for everyone. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!